Hi everyone and welcome to video number 10 on Weimar Republic and video number 10 is the last one in the first section of the course. First section we've been looking at the whole of the Weimar Republic and video 10 is the final video in this first section and it's to do with culture. Now what was happening in German society from 1918 to 1933. What was going on in the area, the world of culture? Well, it was a time of change. I mentioned that in our previous video when I was looking at the position of women in the Weimar Republic. And I suggested that things were changing for women. And also, as regards culture, things were beginning to change. Why would that be? Well, here's three things to have a think about. Number one, the old regime, the traditional regime of the Kaiser, the leader of Germany, that had been swept away at the end of World War I. The old regime had gone. Secondly, Weimar, the constitution, it was all about freedom, freedom of speech, etc. So there was a new feeling emerging with the new government. And the third factor, when Gustav Stresemann begins to help the economic recovery, there was more money available to be spent on culture and the arts. So three reasons there why in culture, in Weimar Germany, it was a time of change. Now, what was being changed? What was actually different in the culture? Here's three words. Number one, objectivism. Being objective, not romantic, not making things seem lovely and nice. Instead, showing it as it was, showing the hardship. And in some of the art and the culture, this objectivism comes through. The second, second key idea, modernism. Let's look to the future. Let's move away from the old tradition. The Kaiser has gone. Let's be more modern. The second idea. And the third idea, expressionism. Let's reflect the thoughts and the feelings of the artists. So there's three things that begin to come through in German culture during the time of the Weimar Republic. Now for the rest of the video, I'm going to break them up into different sections of culture. Let's start with art. Art. Mm. Remember I said this idea of objectivity, a new objectivity, neue Sachlichkeit in the German. I apologize for my terrible German. Now there were new artists, men like Gross, G-R-O-S-Z, and a man called Otto Dix. Both of these men were World War I veterans. They'd both been and seen the horrors of the reality of trench warfare in World War I. And their art, their paintings reflected this. Go on and have a look on uh, the internet. Try and have a look at some of the work of Otto Dix at his paintings. Very, very interesting. And it's showing the, the injuries that the soldiers suffered. It showed the sort of uglier side of life. People being homeless. Gross had a painting and it was called Grey Day. And it was all about the boredom of life. So they are showing the reality. That was a step, as a change, shall we say. Not necessarily a step forward, but it was a change in the art that was shown in Weimar after World War I. What about the second area of culture? Cinema. Now, cinema, of course, is very popular today. Go back to Weimar, Germany, and it was a golden age for German films, for German cinema. People were sort of creating new ideas. There were new innovations. The cabinet of Dr. Caligari, one of the world's first horror films. 
in Germany. A man called Fritz Lang. He was possibly the top film director in the world. 1927, he made a film called Metropolis. And possibly at that time, it was the most technically advanced film ever made. And he was looking towards the future, looking towards what the rest of the 20th century would actually bring. Now, you may never have seen Metropolis, but if you like music, if you've ever heard of a pop group called Queen, they had a single called Radio Gaga. All we hear is Radio Gaga, Radio Google, Radio Gaga. And they have clips from Metropolis in their video. So you could always go and have a look at it there. And the film Metropolis was financed by the German government agency. Money going into the arts. Also at that time, there was a film star, Marlena Dietrich. She was possibly the top female film star in the world, German. And she played very strong, powerful, glamorous women. The idea of women being more equal. So cinema was beginning to bring changes forward in Weimar, Germany. Now the third area, architecture. I mentioned in some of the other videos, Bauhaus, it actually means school of building, led by a man called Gropius. And they were very bold designs, architecture, building, rebuilding Germany, moving it forward. A man called Mendelssohn, an architect, he designed what was called the Einstein Tower in Potsdam, a city in Germany. And it was sort of like a science observatory for looking into space. And have a look at the design, it's brilliant. It's almost shaped like a space rocket. Very new, unbelievable new designs. So architecture was another way that German culture was moving forward. The fourth area, one of my favourite things. Look behind me. I love books. Literature. Literature was very, very important. It showed, remember that thing about reality and objectivity? It showed the divisions that were around in Germany. There were some right-wing authors, people like Muller and Spengler, and they are criticising democracy, and they're glorifying World War I. They are. That was fantastic. The war was brilliant. Let's get back to that. So the, some of the books were harking back to a, a new, uh, the old age, World War I and the Kaiser. Against that, remember I said Germany is quite divided, New left-wing authors are challenging that. And they say, no, World War I was terrible. We don't want to go back to that. We want to move in a different direction. Now, can you see the name of that book? All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Remark. That is a fantastic book. Only quite thin, it's well worth a read. And it shows the reality of fighting in the trenches from the German perspective, the German soldiers, the German trenches. Now, it's an anti-war book. It was very, very popular in Weimar, Germany. In 1929, when it was first produced, half a million copies were sold in three months. And it's still selling copies later. Here we are, almost a hundred years later, and I'm buying it. A fantastic anti-war, anti-World War I book. But it shows what was going on. There was a, almost like a discussion going on through literature about the way forward for Germany. People were writing and people were reading new ideas. So that's literature. The final one, the final area that we're going to look at in the culture, and it's to do with the theatre. Now, two new words that they used at that time, Zeit Theatre and Zeit Oper. 
Zeit means time. So it means theatre and opera of the time. And they were critical of what had been happening in Germany. The plays, the operas were sending a message and they were criticising what had gone on. A man called Piscator, he wrote a play called The Salesman of Berlin. In that play, there's a scene where there's a street cleaner, a man with a brush, and he's on the stage and he's literally brushing piles of money away. 1923, hyperinflation. He's sort of saying, this is happening, look. And he's putting it on the stage for people to see the message. In another part of the play, the street cleaner, he's sweeping away the old World War I helmets. The old pickle house there. And it's been swept away. Trying, using it as a sort of image, as a metaphor. Let's sweep away the old ideas of World War I. Let's move to a newer, better way of living. In another very famous play at the time, there's a uh, character in the play and he's criticising Germany. Well, fair enough, you might say. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, when he's actually giving his speech criticising Germany, he sat in a toilet. Wow. What does that say about the playwright and the message that he's trying to suggest there? So theatre also was a way of criticising and trying to move things forward. Culture was important. Culture was trying to reflect society and maybe change it in some way. At the time, through the 1920s, and certainly the later part of the 1920s, as the German economy recovered, I think you could quite make a good case to suggest that Berlin was rivaling Paris as the cultural capital of Europe. People were going out to bars, cabarets. Okay, so Berlin was a cultural centre, probably second only to Paris. And it was certainly quite close between the two great capital cities there. So we see culture in Weimar Germany was thriving. It was energetic. It was changing, as I've tried to show you in this video. Just before we finish, what do you think the reaction would be to all of these changes? Any ideas? As ever, it was mixed. Some people loved it. Thought, wow, what a fantastic, exciting place in which to live and grow up and go out and have a good time. So some people welcomed it. But remember when I did the video on women and I said some people didn't like the change. Some people were opposed to the changes. Well, who would oppose these cultural developments and why? Have you got any ideas? Well, I'll give you just a couple to think about. The first group, the left wing. Some of the left wing did not like or welcome these cultural changes. And the reason for that was they said, look, it's a waste of money. People are being far too extravagant. If you've got money, don't just spend it on the arts. We need to concentrate on the basics. We need to concentrate on improving the lives of the poor and the workers. So they wanted to focus the money elsewhere before turning to culture. So some of the left wing didn't like the spending on culture. Move across the political spectrum to the right wing. Some of the nationalists, including the Nazi party, they might not like these cultural developments because they saw it as moving away from the old traditional way of life of Germany. The German culture was somehow being undermined by these new, different, modern ideas. So there was opposition to the cultural changes that inevitably and undeniably happened during the Weimar Republic. So there we see 
There's culture. That's the end of section one. The Weimar Republic has been laid out. Hopefully that will give you the knowledge in case some questions, some exam questions come up about that. But equally, as we move to section two, which is all about the rise of Hitler and the rise of the Nazi party, this is what the Nazi party were faced with. This was the Germany in which they started to gain power. So in section two, I'll be concentrating more on the Nazi party and its rise to power. But we have to link it to what had already gone on with Weimar Republic. And I'll be doing that more in the videos in section two. As ever, hope it's been useful. I'm off to reread another chapter of one of my favourite books, All Quiet on the Western Front. Hope it's been useful. Speak to you soon. All the best now.